Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode here of Aragon Web TV. My name is Rick Utzler, and I want to thank you guys for joining us. Um, we've got an interesting show tonight. Uh, we've got some, a bunch of stuff to talk about, some guns we're going to be talking about. Uh, we've got some, some things we'll be announcing that I plan to be doing for Aragon Week. And we've got some stuff to talk about with regards to uh, the GTA Grip Review Program, a bit of a full announcement there. <clears throat> so. Uh, just so you guys know, it's been a crazy, crazy day, uh, and uh, forgive me if I've got a little bit of tickle in my throat. Um, just haven't been able to catch my breath. Uh, this actually, just this whole first start of 2022 has been a little bit, a little bit hectic for sure. All right, <clears throat> so let's get started. First off, we have, and I know you guys, uh, if you saw the picture. Um, you guys know we've got the um, the Dar rifle. We've had that in for a while. We did a preview of it on Airgun Web's website, and I've been teasing about a um, a video on the Grip platform, and that's it's done. I just edited that today. I've got a few edits, a few tweaks of some numbers to put together. I make sure I got my math right on the energy levels and that kind of stuff. But that will be going out probably, I don't know, maybe in the next couple of days I expect it to be hitting. So we'll be having that full grip review of the DAR. It's about 14, 15 minutes long. So I think we're going to be able to have some really good content on that platform. And I've been mentioning about what grip is. Um, and let me just kick over to, let me go um, to here. And I'm just going to go to get rid of air guns. Um, <clears throat> if you guys uh, aren't a member of the GTA, I encourage you to go ahead um, and sign up uh, and, you know, join the GTA. Uh, we're working on streamlining that process to make it easier for people to get on board, a little less complicated, and also just uh, kind of more intuitive so that it just makes sense for new people. Uh, and if you have questions, you can always reach out to us as the admins, and we'll try and do the best we can to try, you know, explain the why we do the things we're doing. One of the big things we're running into is, you know, for every <clears throat> one to two good registrations, we get uh, eight to ten uh, spammers and scammers trying to get on and cause problems. So uh, it's a big deal um, that we try and keep things <clears throat> secure so that we don't have a bunch of crap up there that, you know, it's not... Uh, air gun related. Uh, anyway, so if you go to the GTA, and this is the grip gate right here. You can't see it because my head's in the way. Uh, this is the grip gate, and we're probably going to be moving that um, up to the um, up to probably the the arc. We'll probably move that into the arc. But the grip review program is uh, you guys can see. Like this is the, the video we did on the origin. This is a, a just something the Gateway to Air Guns is going to be doing um, to have like this sort of consumer reports perspective of air gun reviews. They're not about selling anything. I mean, obviously we have uh, sponsors that are providing product and and you know helping us out, but that's the that's the extent of their involvement. Um, what what this is designed to do is just be completely objective. And it's actually, you know, I'm doing the first few, but I'm going to be stepping aside here uh, very soon. And the the person that you guys all know very well, which is Erica Angie, she's actually going to be stepping into the role of our grip, grip review lady. And so if you guys have been watching Erica Angie over the past three or four years, you know, she really loves the sport. Um, she's a, a, she pays attention to details. She is. Um, she really wants to bring, you know, just raw data to you guys. And so I think it's going to be a great fit. So as we sort of transition here, you're going to see uh, her really take the lead in, uh, excuse me, in the in the GRIP program. And we will be at some point um, looking for additional reviewers that can help um, fill in the gaps because, you know, it's a lot, it's more work than one person can do. And I would love to see, just this constant flow of really good, rich uh, data, um, just constantly there. <clears throat> so I got a different background tonight, as you guys can see. Um, that let me hit the button again. 
that is actually a sunrise. Uh, hold on just a second. Let me just let him know I'm on a live show. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> I apologize. I actually need to talk to this person, but I will let them know. I will call them back after the show. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> okay <clears throat> again i apologize but that picture you see behind me that was one of our recent sunrises here in texas um very very beautiful out here uh in the mornings sometimes and then also in the evenings we get some great um uh, some great scenery. Anyway, so I just thought I'd share that. It's kind of cool. So let's talk a little bit about Aragon Week. <clears throat> yeah, no, <clears throat> not duck hunting, although probably could down at the stock bond. Anyway, let's talk about Aragon Week. Aragon Week, as I've mentioned before, I'm not going to be going to SHOT Show this year um, for many reasons. Um, primarily just expense. It's very expensive, and a lot of the people I would go to see actually aren't going to be there. So there really didn't, didn't there wasn't a lot of reason to go. Um, what I've decided to do, rather, is I've offered to uh, do a, a bunch of videos that week showcasing stuff that I may have been able to show you, but not actually show you, like on the range. We're, we're, we've got a bunch of stuff already in that we're going to be shooting um, some stuff's brand new. Some stuff is we. It's not even. Um, it's embargoed, and that we can't even tell you what it is. Uh, but we have some very cool stuff that I think is going to be fun for you guys to see. So we're going to have probably eight to ten videos at a minimum that week, a couple a day for starting on the on the Tuesday, and we'll be bringing those things uh, out. And you know, we'll be have a schedule on my. Um, actually, I'll show you real quick. If you go to um, ergonweb.com. This is my new website. We'll have a link up here for Ergon Week, and you guys can kind of see the contributors develop on that schedule. So that's going to be kind of cool. But one of the things I wanted to show you, and I'm going to throw it up here behind me. Uh, let me grab it here. Uh, this is one of the guns I'm supposed to be getting. Now, I've talked to um, New England Air Guns. Uh, all right, so this, which way do I want to roll? All right, let me go over here. Uh, um, you know what? Let me pull it up. I apologize. Let me pull this up in a different window. I'll just drop it here. Okay, this will be a better way to do it. All right, so I'm going to switch back over to this screen. There we are. Okay, so this is the new Evidex Ibex. Um, this is one of the pictures I have that I'll just show you tonight. Um, if you guys are familiar with the Ibex, you know it is one heck of an awesome air gun. It is a, um, I think I'm I'm either getting 45 or 50 caliber. I'm not sure if it's going to have that particular moderator on it or if it's just going to have the muzzle brake. I'll find out when I get it. But New England Air Gun is sending that to me for Air Gun Week. Um, so I'm going to be pretty excited to give that a shot because that's going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to just pull this up here. We'll go back to my subset. Okay, there we are. Um, but yeah, that is that's a pretty cool gun. Um, Mr. Lee from Evanex is telling me we're looking at a 20% increase in power over the original uh, Ibex and like the Rex FA, which is the long barrel model. But that, uh, I had an Ibex years ago and it is a really nice and fun gun ergonomically it's very very nice as compared to other guns that are similar to this the ergonomics i've always liked the ergonomics on this a lot better i love the rail system on this and it, i think it's going to lend itself uh, just for a lot of really good hunting scenarios for folks out there that want to go out and do some hunting with an air gun this thing's going to be awesome so i'm looking forward to getting that in i believe um, New England Air Gun, John, hi John, has these in all different calibers. So, you know, check his website out. Um, but that is going to be very, very, very cool. Um, so I think Heath was asking me a question if we go back here. <clears throat> um, we've got some other things we'll kind of splatter it around with Air Gun Week. But Heath, I don't know if Heath, you were asking me 
a question there. Um, why is Air Arms my favorite air gun? Um, I, that's an easy question for me to answer. Um, for me personally, it's I. I guess some of it is is just sentimental. It was one of the very first high end air guns I ever bought with my own money. Was an Air Arms. I still have that gun. It I, I love shooting that gun. So I think that may be part of it. But I'm more of a traditional sort of air gunner. Well, I like, you know, I mean, come on. What's not to like about that, right? I mean, it looks pretty badass for sure. Um, but I, 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 it's not a bench gun. For, I, I like bench shooting. You guys may have seen my most recent video. Um, it, we're basically saying this is my favorite air gun. This is what I like to do for fun. And that was it. I mean, I just I needed a video for Monday. And I thought, you know, let me just show folks what I like to do when I get the chance to do it. And that's it. I like sitting at the bench, putting up targets and, you know, essentially torturing myself to see how many I can get in a tight group. Um, that's, it, for me, um, the way the Air Arms fits me personally, the stock. I like a traditional gun. I don't, I'm not a fan of the bullpup designs. I, I just, they, they, the balance and the high center of gravity, in my opinion, I don't like it. Um, just me personally. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just I don't like it. Uh, but their guns to me have always just fit really, really well. And so that's one of the reasons they're my favorite. I find them accurate right out of the box. I never have to muck with them. They just shoot. Um, the cocking action has always been just buttery smooth. Um, my wife would say um, her description of air arms is boringly accurate. And so that's that's a phrase she came up with, if I remember correctly, and that's why I like them. They are, to me, boringly accurate. They take very little work to get repeatable, consistent accuracy um, the way I like to shoot. Nothing, I mean, I do, I've shot FX, I've shot AEA, now that I've got Brian's gun here, that's one of the, the grip reviews we're going to be getting to here shortly. Um, I've shot, you know, of just a whole bunch of lower end stuff and a, and a, a few high end stuff. I've got the Red Wolf, which is that is a very traditional looking and feeling gun. That is where the traditional part kind of ends with that, with all the electronics and stuff. That is a beautiful air gun. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's it's probably number two. Uh, but that Air Arms Ultimate Sporter is my favorite, just because it is. It's it's weird because. If I go to, like, back several years, I have an older, and I think I still have it in my Connex, uh, I have an older Walther Maxima Thor. And if you guys ever go back and look at some of the um, Aragon Web TV, TV videos from, I don't know, four or five years ago, uh, you'll see me with the Maxima Thor up in um, the uh, Kaibab National Forest. We were hunting Cecil and myself. I think Aaron was there. Ben was there. We were all hunting squirrels up there. And I had the Maxima Thor. It's heavy. It's not quiet. It's not the most accurate. It's not the most powerful. It doesn't have the best trigger. But for whatever reason, I love that gun. Um, 25 cal, 50 foot pounds. Um, it was a just a really nice gun for me. And it's not everybody's cup of tea. But for me, I really like that gun. I don't know why. But uh, hey, it's it's still one of my favorite guns. Um, I still have it. So it's, it's not regulated. It's got, you know, everything people think they have to have today in an air gun. And it really doesn't have any of it other than it's German build quality and it's built like a tank and it just fits me well. That That's what I love about that gun. All right. So let's see. Um, so ask, this is a good question. And one of the things I have coming in uh, that I'll be uh, doing a some work for Ergon Depot with, and also going to do a video if it comes in time. I'll be doing a video for Ergon Week. Is I have an Ed gun coming in. I have one of the the uh, Lishi twos, the semi autos, the semi auto long and one seven seven. And I have an article that I just wrote for them that'll be coming out on the website here uh, probably next month or so. Kind of looking at all of the Ed gun, the Lishi Lishi two, the was it the something with an M. And some of the Layla, or anyway, forgive me, I don't know their, their naming very well. <laughs> um, uh, I'll get to your question, Hemi, here in a second. Uh, they look very cool. Uh, 
I'm not, you know, anything. Like, I love carbines, okay? Again, if it's a micro carbine, I really like micro carbines. So I think we'll see. We'll see how those work out for uh, for me. Um, the the Ottoman had their little tiny micro bullpup that I thought was pretty cool. That wasn't too bad. Um, and I've got an um, Catron or Catron, forgive me, I don't know how to pronounce it, that was a Utah Airgun sent for Airgun Expo. That gun I liked very much. Now, that I've got the long, high-powered version, but you can get that in a short um, carbine. But like a micro carbine, um, one of the things I really like is what we have at Airgun Pro Shop. I don't know if we have it. I think we're out of stock. But we have the with the Rex pistol, and we put the rifle tank on it. We call it the last resort. Uh, and a little micro carbine, a 50 cal. That I really like. So anyway, so <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, Heath, you bought an R10 SE. <clears throat> R10 is a beautifully wonderful gun. I've got a couple I need to get fixed. Um, one of my favorite guns. I have three R10s, actually, that are leaking. I need to get them fixed. All right. Let's see. Hemi asked a question. Random question here. Is there a way place to lube a PCP to protect uh, against moisture? I have a hand pump, so it's not the best. Really? The best thing you could do is shoot your gun. Don't leave it sit. Um, Depending on the gun you have and how easy it is to service it, you know, once every six months, take it apart, clean it, put it back together. Um, I don't know if this is a an approved method. I've done it. Um, and that is to, like you say, you have a fill probe gun. I'll put some silicone in the probe and then fill it. And it sort of just gets the silicone in the gun. I've done that before. Um, but I don't know. Other than taking it apart and literally cleaning it out, I don't know what you can do to keep moisture to a minimum other than shoot the gun. Um, leaving it sit to just sit may not be great for it. Anyway, so that's just – if somebody else has a better option, you know, please share it. Because hand pumps can be very tough on guns, especially if you're in a, a humid environment, for sure. Um <clears throat> Okay, there's a question about the Diana. Uh, you know, I, if I can get access to it, you know, I'm open to reviewing anything. And maybe I should take a minute if you can um, if you can uh, indulge me for a moment. Uh, and I'll just share with you guys the way the channel works as far as what I get to review and so forth. Um, <clears throat> this is my full-time job. So like you, if you have a job, uh, you go, you work your job with the expectation of getting a paycheck at the end of the month. You have bills, a house payment, car payment, you know, uh, you know, children need shoes. You got to put food on the table, et cetera. You have, you do the work you do, uh, a full-time job with the expectation you're going to get a paycheck and be able to pay your bills. And the channel uh, from YouTube gets essentially nothing. YouTube's monetization is absolute rubbish for anything gun related so we may get i may get 120 dollars a month from youtube and that's off of 300,000 views a month um i may get this 100 bucks so not a lot of money <clears throat> certainly not enough to live on so the bulk of the other money comes through sponsors and the way i've organized my channel is i have a lot of sponsors that pay a monthly amount based on uh, what coverage they'll get the year, and they support what I do. And they um, that's really where their leverage ends. Um, I, <clears throat> I, I, I recently, that video I did on uh, Air Arms, and I said they don't pay me to say, hey, this is my favorite air gun. And if they don't, I mean, they do support my channel, and I have a, a just a huge, wide range of, of things that I do as long as they want me to use their stuff throughout the year. Um, and that's what I do. I'm pleased to do it when I love their stuff. So that's not a hardship for me. Um, but I have nothing dictated of what I have to say, how I have to say it. None of that stuff exists. I have sponsors that have that I've been with for 10, 12 years that just know me and trust me. And they're happy to support what I'm doing because they know 
you know, I, I want to share with you guys uh, their cool products. So that's how my channel works. So when it comes to reviewing something like, say, the Diana, well, let's say Pyramid Air has a Diana. I can request it. They may send it. If they do, I'll review it. Um, I have reached out to a lot of manufacturers and a lot of manufacturers work through dealers. Um, and the dealers, they see, the manufacturers see the dealers as the ones responsible for the marketing. Now, that's not always the case, but oftentimes it is. So if a dealer is the exclusive dealer at a particular brand, they may or may not want to pay for any advertising, in which case the only way then to review something is if I go out of pocket. And I have some guns that I've gone out of pocket on, and I haven't, one of the guns I may do for Ergon Week, which now I'm thinking about it, would be a really good one, as I purchased my own out of pocket, purchased the Hotson Blitz um, in 22 caliber because I wanted to shoot one and it's stinking awesome. So that would be a really good gun to show. Uh, I really wanted to get it to see if it was accurate. I, I know it sprays pellets, uh, but I wanted to know if it did so accurately. Uh, I have done a lot of shooting with it and I can say it's it's more accurate than I had expected it to be, and it's extremely reliable. So that's actually a gun that has done very, very well. So if you ask me, am I going to review something? People ask me, are you going to do AEA? Are you going to do this gun? Are you going to do that gun? Are you going to review this? I'm happy to review anything. Um, it just it needs to fit within the schedule, and it needs to be uh, through an avenue where um, – there's a return in it for me. I know that may sound just, I don't know how that sounds, but it's a reality. If you go to work, you go to work with the expectation of getting a paycheck. <clears throat> and so when I go to work and my work may be like today, I edited videos and, um, you know, I do that with the expectation that I'm going to get paid. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. It's, it's a tough, tough line to walk right now because, um, be wonderful if I was independently wealthy and never had to rely on any sponsorships to do what I'm doing. Um, but I, I'm not in that place. Um, and I don't want to take money from you all, like a Patreon or one of these other. I want to don't want to take money from you to make videos that way. I'd much rather have that come from another party. Um, again, the relationships I have with these other parties, because I've worked with them for so long, um, they, they are very, very free. They write the check. They say, Rick, we like what you're doing. Keep doing it. And that's really the end of their involvement uh, with my channel. Uh, and it's hard for people to wrap themselves around that sort of flexibility that I have. But I do have it. And I'm thankful for it. And I hope that makes sense. So will I get to review the, the Diana E, whatever it was? I hope so. <laughs> that would be kind of cool. All right. All right, so back up. We got a few questions here. Um, let's see. Well, let's see. I think the Matador is one I would really like to see. I think I'd like to shoot that one for sure. Let's see. I think the back of the silicone thing, I think, is probably a good way to keep try and keep that moisture to an issue. Um, or less of an issue, I should say. Uh, moisture filter for the pump. As long as you're filtering on the high high pressure side, that can be a help. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, the best way, really, if you're going to be really into air guns, uh, PCP air guns, getting a good compressor uh, with proper filtration is going to be your best friend. Um, whether you're direct filling your gun or you're filling a bottle, um, that, that's going to be your best way to deal with things. Clean, dry air is what you want. Anytime you deviate from that, you're you're introducing uh, potential problems into your air gun. And it's a pain when you get leaks that are caused by dirt, moisture, other stuff. It is a royal pain to have to take them apart and clean them. Or it's hundreds of dollars. Like I had an FX that... Um, had to have resealed and thank God, I think, thank goodness, Air, Air Guns of Arizona took it, they fixed it and put it back together for me, but it was, it was a couple hundred bucks. So, I mean, that's, you know, I don't want to keep doing that every six months if, you know, on a gun. So you want to clean dry air is your best friend. So, okay. Um, all right. So Heath 
just mentioned the Air Arms Tactical. I'm going to zip over here for a second because I happen to have that up on my screen here. The reason is thanks to Claire. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get it in time, uh, but sup uh, supposedly their shipment of guns going to Pyramid Air has already left. It's on the way. In that shipment is uh, one of these Air Arms Tacticals. So I am super pumped to get this in. This is um, uh, uh, this one's good. I don't know what caliber I'm getting. I, I just said whatever works for you guys. I'm happy to shoot it. So I am going to be getting one of these. I'm a, man, if I get this in uh, before Airgun Week or even in the middle of Airgun Week, I can still shoot and get a video done for the week. But I am very excited to be getting one of these in. So first of all, thank you to Claire and Air Arms because not only do they make wonderful air guns, they're actually just a wonderful company to be involved with and work with. If you notice, they're, they're using all Magpul stuff and M-Lock rails and this is going to be a really nice gun. I'm telling you, this thing's going to be awesome. So um, anyway, so definitely, if if I don't get this in time to do it for Arrogant Week, it'll be very soon after we're going to have this gun. Uh, we'll have this gun up, uh, the, the video of this gun up and going. And this is probably one that we'll do several videos on because I don't think we're going to be able to to hit them uh, all at once. So we'll we'll do several. Um, so I just saw Ergen Angie come up. Hey, Angie. Um, I was telling the folks about your upcoming wonderful involvement in the GRIP, grip program. So um, you're already obligated now, so you can't back out. Um, yes, and I know you want one of these air arms uh, desperately. Uh, we'll see. I, uh, let's get this one, uh, and maybe I can you know, beg and plead and conjole and, I don't know, all kinds of things. Maybe Claire will be nice enough to send us another one. We'll see. But uh, anyway, this will be, I'm looking forward to getting that air arms in. Um, okay, we have any other questions here? Um, Heath has asked me, did you see my question on the dwell time with TX200 HC of Pro Sport? Um, I, didn't, I didn't pick up on that you were asking about dwell time, Heath. Uh, I did see you asking about those three guns. And I'm guessing you're thinking, the, the the lock time, I, I guess is another way to put it, of how long it takes from the time you pull the trigger to the time the pellets leave in the barrel uh, and, like, the the time the spring actually engages versus, say, something else. Um, I'm not sure about the question you're asking, but maybe if you rephrase it, I'll do the best I can to to answer that. And it may be – the answer may come from some work Walther did uh, on their when they were looking at spring versus gas ramp, so uh, hit me back with a full question, and I'll do my best to answer your answer your question for you. Okay, um, yeah, going back to the the air arms tactical, I mean, it is a, I mean, just look at it. <laughs> uh, now, there's a rumor I heard, and it's one I'm, I'm going to want to find out is that I believe, theoretically, that the action, a, a S510 action, will actually drop in that frame. If that's possible, where you could take an old S510 and retrofit it to this frame, oh my, I hope to God that's true. I don't know if it is or not. I may be spreading false rumors, but can you imagine if you could take your S510 and drop it in that frame? Oh man, that would be so stinking cool. Anyway. Claire's going to get mad at me for saying that if I can't do it. Anyway. Um, okay, so Heath, if you can phrase that question for me, great. Um, all right, so let's see. What else do we want to talk about today? We talked about Airgun Week. We talked about um, GTA membership and all that kind of – oh, I know what we've got to talk about. Forgot. We had our drawing for the giveaway, and we do have a winner, and it ha and he has been verified. We're going to be doing a, a um, pardon me. We're going to be doing a notification here shortly. Um, but yeah, we had a winner for the uh, origin and the compressor and the scope, and so that would be um, that will be going out probably first of next week. I'm thinking so that's going to be pretty cool. We've got a photo. We're going to get some some materials together and. 
replace the contest page with the winner and a little bit of biography on the guy and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be pulling that together here in the next little bit. So that was very cool. Thank you for everyone that uh, <clears throat> thank you for everyone that that entered the contest and and uh, you know did that. And we're going to be looking at other things. Right now, it may be every other month that we have a fairly significant giveaway, um, but we'll see how it goes. It's uh, it's a lot of work, and we need the products to give away. So well, I'm, hopefully, I'm hoping that through the GRIP program, we'll be able to have some of those review products get turned around and used as giveaways. That's my hope anyway. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see here. <clears throat> okay. Uh, here's a here's a he's question is one more accurate than the other easier to shoot well between the regular length okay that's a very good question um i have not shot the hunter carbine i know angie has from looking at what she's been getting i would say that her results with the hunter hunter carbine has looked like it's a fairly easy gun to shoot i would like to see I'd like to get a hunter carbine in 22, and maybe that's something I can request because it's a legitimate question, Heath. I've got a Pro Sport, I've got a TX200. It might be nice. Um, I, I, it may be nice to take a look at uh, all three and like a comparison. And I, I would be curious to see how that would work out. Um, so Hemi's asking a question or mentioning about the GX CS1. Let me just pull that up real quick. I think I know the one you're talking about, but I'm just going to pull it up real quick over here. Because I'm still using the GX battery compressor. Um, okay. So I guess my question, so here's the compressor. Right. So my question would be, what are you going to use it for? Um, if you're going to fill, I do like the rocker switch. That's really nice. That's kind of cool. If you're going to use it to just direct fill your gun, it's probably fine. You'll want to get a better filter for that than they, they give you. Um, but it's probably fine. It's probably maintenance free. Um, no oil, no water, just all that kind of stuff. Um, it's probably going to be fine. Uh, I wouldn't try and fill bottles with it. Um, you know, this is interesting. That's not a paintball gun. <laughs> that's not, or that's an air pistol, but it's a CO2 pistol. Don't you just love um, Chinese marketing? I mean, that's a CO2 pistol, guys. That's not a pistol you're going to fill with that compressor. I'm just saying. That is, I find that hilarious. Okay, anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. That is pretty funny. And I guarantee you, you probably don't want to fill a breathing bottle with that thing either. Anyway, um, it's probably going to be fine if you just want to fill your air gun. But if you're looking to fill bottles, it's really not the right choice. I would not go that route at all. Um, but again, filling just filling your piece piece directly is fine. I'll tell you the one that I got here. Uh, see if it pulls up here. Uh, well, there's that one. I'm looking for the. There it is. Okay, so I the GX actually sent me this pump. Um, I bought it and they reimbursed me. But this pump here has been doing wonderful. Um, it fills faster than I would have expected, uh, and it is a really really nice pump with the batteries that you don't have to be futz, futzing around needing power at the range or anything, just take this with you. And it runs a solid hour. Um, I've not had any problems with the batteries going flat or anything like that. It just has really worked well. So I can go out, shoot, fill my guns up to 250 bar, 300 bar, uh, and it's it has just kept working. So I would say this is a really, really nice option. It's a little more money, but it's dropped, um, you know, $70 um, from when I picked it up. So it's it's actually a, a, I think it's a really good value just for what it's worth to partner. So okay, let's see what we got here. <clears throat> yeah, I think the you know the the whole thing with regards to faithful warriors talking about uh, air guns that are um, 
you know, advantageous to have uh, when firearms become less available. And you're not kidding. Absolutely. So. Let's see. Um, uh, yeah, Hemi, if you're just going to fill the gauntlet in the Benjamin pistol, that's probably a fine compressor. Uh, GX seems to be seems to make decent stuff that I've tried, so um, I would say you're probably okay. Um, yeah, Angie, I think Angie's first grip video, if I'm going to spill the beans, is really going to be on the uh, Marauder pistol. Uh, which is a gun that, gosh, I mean, it is a wonderful little shooting package. That's a wonderful little backyard plinker or, or very lightweight hunting rifle. You know, if you're hunting squirrels and stuff, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, air gun to have and shoot. So e e easy choice on that one. So we'll see if we'll, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get that, we'll get that out up and going. <clears throat> All right, guys. Well, I think we're kind of running out of things to talk about, um, and so we may wrap it up a little early tonight. I've got to go down and, uh, well, I don't have to. I get to go down and pack up some packages for Airgun Pro Shop. Real quick, um, if you are looking for some air guns and having them hard, they're hard to find, Airgun Pro Shop still does have, uh, we have several Evanex guns, including the Big More Snipers and some Maxim L's and some semi-autos. Um, we also have a couple air arms in stock, and I'm going to be listing a ton of Rick's private stock stuff coming up here shortly. We also have ammo, so if you've been one of those guys that has not been able to find um, pellets lately, we do have pellets. We do limit orders to two tins per person per month, and that's not two tins of everything. That's just two tins, and so we have a lot of people that go up and buy 15 tins and don't read the site and we have to cancel the order and stuff and that's happening more often unfortunately uh, but <clears throat> if you need a 10 of 18 13s we happen to have some uh, you can go and pick them up and you can buy two tins per person per month and uh, we do have yet some inventory of 22s 25s 30s 35s and we have a a lot of uh, big bore hunter supply ammo in stock as well so if you're looking for stuff to shoot you're running out of pellets or whatever Check us out, airgunproshop.com. We do have some inventory, and like I said, we also have inventory of well, several Evanex guns and some other stuff, other product too. We have a couple hammers still on the shelf um, and some other things. So if there's something you've been itching to get and shoot and haven't been able to find it, um, take a look because we actually have a few things there in stock that uh, may, may be right up your alley and what you're looking for. So that's going to be it today, guys. We're going to wrap it up. Um, and we'll see you next week. In fact, I think if everything goes well, we're going to have a special show Thursday. Uh, Travis will be back. Uh, we've got an announcement for the GTA. I think they have chosen their next uh, person for the Hall of Fame, so like, like the Person of the Year Award. And so I think we're going to have them online with us Thursday. If not, uh, it, it'll be very soon, but I think that's the plan. It'll be, I think, 7 o'clock uh, Mountain Time. Uh, hopefully all that works out and you guys can see who GTA picked for person of the year. And uh, that'll be fun. If you guys um, are those guns made in Mexico, any good, don't know which ones you're talking about, Mr. Cox, but email me. If you have some, uh, um, if you have some names you're talking about, shoot me an email and I'll see what I can find out for you. Um, David's asking me, here's a good question. Is the rainstorm still available? Um, Sort of, maybe, don't know yet. Uh, could be. <laughs> is that helpful? Um, uh, the Max ML is the bullpup version, and I have those in stock. Uh, the Rainstorm might be available. Uh, I just need to talk to Mr. Lee. So, anyway, could be something. Um, we'll see what happens uh, on our next Evanex order. It's probably going to be a couple months out, but we'll see. So, all right, guys, that's going to be it. Um, please, you know, be nice to one another. Hop on GTA. If you're not a member, become a member. If you have questions about air guns or you want to help other air gunners with their questions, that is a just a great place to, to do it. And please be ready to jump on board and help support the GRIP review program. Um, the videos are not going to be going out on my channel. They're going to be going out on the Gateway to Air Gun channel. And so we need, uh, we need eyeballs because 
that's what helps let the advertisers know it's worth their time for having us do that work. So I uh, really ask for your help in that. And that's it for tonight. So, guys, we'll see you next week. If, if, if not, if we don't see you Thursday, we'll see you next week. And for now, that's going to be it. My name is Rick Utzer here. You guys, adios. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.